In this video, I want to go over some basic Battery 101 concepts that we learned after getting our camper. Then I'll go over an amp hour budget for our four wheel camper hot build. So this is really for newbies like I was who are just getting their first rig. I hope it'll help you think through your battery and solar needs before you get your rig. Or this might be a little too nerdy for your taste, so feel free to skip it and do what most of us do. Get your rig, hit the road, and figure it out as you go. So let's start off with Battery 101, or what this newbie learned after getting his first camper. If you've had a camper with a house battery before, skip ahead to part two. Here are the five things we learned that you should know. Number one, the usable amount of juice in your new battery is one half the rated capacity. We got a 79 amp hour battery with our Hawk shell in 2019. So we got a usable capacity of 39.5 amp hours. Amp hours are how many hours your battery will put out one amp of current. In other words, amps times hours equal amp hours. Number two, the voltage range for your battery from empty to full charge ranges from about 12.25 volts to about 12.8 volts. Or if you're not really getting a full charge each time, as with our solar setup, I like to use about 12.75 volts for a upper end. That is a range of only about 0 0.5 volts from empty to full. You can see that in this chart I've created uh, basically from the literature and from our own experience. Number three, yes, the battery may run some things below 12.25 volts, but it is not good for the battery, so I call that my zero capacity point. Below about 12.4 volts, you are on your last third of battery capacity and should recharge. Below 12.25 volts, your battery life will be shortened. And by 11.9 volts, or so they say, it'll be dead. I try to stay above 12.4 most of the time. Number four, don't rely on a battery voltage reading while it is charging or under load. This chart shows my battery voltage reading after charging for two hours on my 100 watt solar panel. The voltage jumps to 12.35 volts in two hours, but settles down to a resting voltage of about 12.74 volts after 21 hours. So my net increase was only 0 0.14 volts. This is because the surface charge during charging and for hours afterward is not representative of the resting charge, which really reflects the remaining capacity of your battery. Likewise, when using the battery, turn off all loads on the battery and wait 15 or 20 minutes until it mostly settles down before reading. You can see this effect in this chart where a one amp load has just been removed at zero time. And it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for the voltage reading to rise back up close to the resting voltage. I've managed just fine using just the voltage, but you can avoid these problems in reading voltage by getting a battery monitor that tracks amps going in and out of your battery. Victron and Renergy both make popular monitors, and I'm considering upgrading to one of those. Also, if you can afford it, lithium may be best for you because they are lighter, and 80 or 90 percent of their rated capacity is usable, instead of 50 percent like AGM, and they last longer. The negatives for lithium are the upfront cost 
and the complicated heater and battery management required in freezing conditions. So if you can afford it, I recommend you look at these options. Go to Wander the West for old camper form to find some real experts on upgrading your battery. They are happy to answer any questions you have. Now on to part two, the amp hour budget. In our last video, we described some minor 12 volt mods and we measured the amp loads in our 4 volt camper off shell build. Here are those measurements. Here is our basic amp hour budget with our own amp readings in the red box. The yellow shading indicates cells for input while the green cells are, are the calculated results. We start by entering the battery type one for AGM and two for lithium or LIFEPO. LIFEPO is lithium iron phosphate. In this case, I entered one for AGM and 79 amp hours for the rating on our original battery we got from the four wheel camper factory. In the red box, you can see that for an AGM battery, it is assumed that 50% of its amp hour rating is usable energy or 39.5 amp hours for our 79 amp hour battery. We assume 80% is safely usable for lithium batteries. This column that's highlighted in red represents a fraction of time each device is cycled on. For most things like lights, it's 1.0 or 100% of the time. For the refrigerator and furnace, it is less than one because a thermostat turns them on and off as needed. I know our refrigerator is on pulling 3.0 amps only 20 to 25% of the time. For the furnace, it's highly variable depending on temperature, ventilation, etc. So make your best guess on that for your own conditions. The next column is hours of use per day. As you can see, we typically use the furnace for only about 15 minutes in the morning or 0.25 hours to take the chill off as we climb out of bed and a fantastic fan only about six minutes to exhaust steam when we boil water for coffee. However, the refrigerator and the COLP detector are on 24 hours per day. The final factor in the calculation is the fraction of use after sunset. This factor assumes our battery is near a full charge at the end of the solar day and really only needs to run things until the sun rises in the morning. Thus, the full battery only needs pow to power the fraction of each device that occurs after the sun goes down, or at least after it start, stops producing useful energy. On the other hand, if each of these factors is set to one, we can simulate a totally overcast day or a day in a shady camp when our battery must power everything for full 24 hours. So finally, we multiply all four of the yellow shaded inputs together to get the amp hours used in a typical day for each device. And by adding them all up, we get the total amp hours that the battery must power on its own without recharging. In this typical case, it's about 14.4 amp hours. And 14.4 amp hours is only 36% of our usable capacity of 39.5 amp hours, which is at the top of this column. So we're in good shape on a typical warm season sunny day. And using our voltage versus percent of capacity use chart we talked about in the very beginning, we find that our resting voltage the next morning is about 12.57 volts. This matches what we usually find reading the voltage before the sunrise the next morning when none of the devices are running. 
it probably ranges from about 12.5 to 12.6 from day to day, but 12.57 is very typical. Now, when it is overcast all day or the solar panel is shaded all day, the battery must be able to handle 24 hours of load. And we can simulate this by changing the fraction of use after sunset to 1.0 for all devices. As a result, we use about 11 more amp hours and overall about 65% of our capacity. Ending up near where I'm starting to get a little nervous around 12.43 volts resting voltage. This also matches my experience when we camp in dense forests for one day. So again, this adds to my confidence in the tool. If I want to see how we will do after two days in the shade, I have set the fractions of use after sunset all to 1.0. And I also multiplied the total amp hours, which was 25.6 by a factor of two for two days, giving us 51.3 total amp hours and 130% of our usable capacity. Yikes! This gets us so low that we risk damage to the battery or at least shortening its life. In reality, I would start shutting things down after about 12.3 volts or so, turning up the refrigerator, minimizing furnace use, for example. After a few shady camps and very low voltages, we upgraded slightly to a 105 amp hour AGM battery. I drooled over lithium iron phosphate batteries, but the expense and the complicated battery management in freezing conditions made me not quite ready to take that step. That's just me. Most people would go that way if they could afford it. So do your own research and decide for yourself. So to simulate our new battery, I changed the rated capacity at the top to 105 amp hours. And as you can see, it just gets us to the two day mark. About 98% of our capacity. And that's a very rare case for us, so we feel pretty good about it. Now, if I had gone to a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, we would be even more comfortable ending up using only 64% of our capacity in two days without sun or alternator. If we lived and camped in the Pacific Northwest or any densely forested area, I would definitely look at lithium batteries a lot harder. Now let's look at the worst case amp hour budget. This scenario is a winter day with cold temperatures when it gets dark early and we spend much longer in the camper and use the furnace much more. Here is the winter worst case scenario with our original 79 amp hour battery. We get low on battery voltage but remain fairly comfortable. Now, if you combine a worst case winter day with an overcast sky or no sun for 24 hours, we end up getting a little nervous with our 105 amp hour battery getting down to 12.36 volts. But with two winter days and overcast skies, we won't make it and we will need to seriously conserve. That's when a thick down quilt comes in handy at nighttime. On the other hand, if we had the 100 amp hour lithium battery, we would just make it through the, those two cloudy winter days without conserving much. We rarely camp more than one night in the winter and would have avoided if we expect over cast skies, so we still feel okay about our AGM battery. However, we are considering an upgrade to the wire running to our alternator 
as the emergency charging source. We can get 0 0.05 volts from 15 minutes of idling the truck already with the wire from that four-wheel camper installed. So a much heavier wire gauge should give us a good boost. You'll be the first to know if we do this. I hope this has helped you think to think through your battery and solar needs. Here are my takeaways from this exercise. If you have fairly minimal power needs, like us, and rarely camp in the Pacific Northwest or in heavily forested areas, a single AGM battery with a 100 or 200 watt solar panel will probably work fine for you. If not, lithium is probably the way to go if you can afford it. However, in freezing conditions, they require heaters and complicated battery management systems, and that has dissuaded me so far. That and the fact that I really don't need a lot more power. In the next video, I'll go over our simple 100 watt solar panel setup and how I installed it on our roof without drilling any holes into the aluminum top sheet. So please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for that.